Welcome to Two Minute Tech Tuesdays, a weekly show about Varnish technology presented to you in two minutes or less. I'm Thais, I'm the technical evangelist here at Varnish Software. And in this week's episode, we'll talk about Hitch, which is our TLS proxy, but it's a logical follow-up of last week's episode about the proxy protocol. So do check that one out because it will make a lot of sense here because we will communicate between Hitch and Varnish over that proxy protocol. But this week's episode is solely about Hitch. I'll put two minutes on the timer and tell you all about it. Hitch is a TLS proxy developed by us, by Varnish Software. It's completely open source and terminates the TLS session, which is especially useful if you're using Varnish Cache, the open source version of Varnish that doesn't support TLS. So by adding Hitch in front of Varnish, you provide an endpoint for HTTPS requests. Hitch supports both TCP IP and Unix domain sockets and also has support for proxy protocol versions one and two. Multiple certificates can be loaded at once and thanks to server name indication or SNI, they can be matched to the host names of incoming TLS requests. TLS protocols and cipher settings can be configured and Hitch also supports OCSP stapling. When connecting Hitch to Varnish, one needs to configure a certain amount of parameters and that can be done in the hitch.com file. Here's a typical example configuration. Not all the settings are there because most of the default values are fine. The front end is our listening address bound on all network faces, listening on the conventional TLS port 443. The backend represents Varnish that is hosted locally on port 8443. The PEMDIR directive specifies a directory where certificates can be found and that's etc hitch cert.d. We won't load every single file, but only the ones that match this glob pattern, which is .pem. Certificates can also be explicitly loaded through pen file and this etc hitch cert.pem file acts as our fallback. Application level protocol negotiation can also take place at the TLS level, announcing support for both HTTP 2 and HTTP 1.1. And since we want to use the proxy protocol to relay more information about the original client connection, we write the proxy v2 header. Varnish also needs to be configured to handle hitch connections. We won't solely rely on port 80 for incoming connections, but we'll register an extra listening address, host it locally, listening on port 8443 for proxy input. If you don't want to use TCP IP, you can do it over Unix domain sockets as well, but remember, it's proxy, not regular HTTP. And it serves our best interest to also enable HTTP2 support to this runtime configuration. If you want to switch from TCP IP to Unix domain sockets, simply change the listening group and the backend and register the socket there. And that's all there is to it. Thank you for watching this week's episode about Hitch. It's a very crucial component in our architecture and despite the fact that Varnish Enterprise supports TLS natively, we're still a big fan of Hitch. If you're looking for a pure TLS proxy, Hitch should be on top of your list. And Hitch is not strictly tied to Varnish, nor is it to HTTP, because Hitch only does TLS and has no notion of HTTP, so you can use it outside of a web context. The fact that it supports the proxy protocol also makes it easy in conjunction with other technologies, especially Varnish. So please have a look at last week's episode about proxy because it will make a lot of sense and you will see how the proxy protocol can be leveraged from Varnish to terminate TLS. We also have developer portal tutorial about Hitch and about the proxy protocol and I'll link those in the video below. So again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next week for yet another episode.